Hi, y'all. My name is Kathy. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm not sure if I'm going to make this a Chatty Kathy short spot or I'm going to make it another anti-aging pre-prevention podcast. We're going to talk a little bit more about hair today and how important the hair all over our body is for us. So stay tuned. So like I said a second ago, hair all over our body is very important and it does so many things to make us be healthier okay our hair is actually a protector our hair is actually another one of our first line of defenses against our environment okay our hair grows usually about a half an inch a month depending on how clean you keep your scalp and other other things how healthy that you are how healthy your the food and stuff that you eat okay there's many many things that make your hair grow a little bit, but that's kind of an average, okay? There are over a thousand hair follicles in one square centimeter of skin, over a thousand, that's a lot. There's no hair on our palms, on the soles of your feet, or on your lips, on top of your lips. On top of your lips, yes, but not on your lips, right? And that it's for everybody, everybody has hair. The hair is so protective for us. The hair that we have in our nose, the hairs that we have in our ears, and our eyelashes, they all actually protect us from dust and dander and pathogens that could actually get into our bodies, right? Hair on our eyes, like I said, our eyelashes, they actually decrease the intensity of light that's coming in at different angles. It diminishes some of the glare, like our sunglasses do, right? And it protects our eyes. Isn't that awesome? I did not know this until I started studying it for the podcast so I can learn, so I can be healthy. And then now I can teach you guys, right? All the hair all over our body, it actually keeps us warm. And it lets us know if we're cold, if we're scared. It also lets us know if we have beautiful energy coming through us too. You get goosebumps everywhere. Now, there's many parts of the hair, but the dermis is actually where the root is. And this is actually where the follicle and it actually makes stem cells. Our stem cells will help heal and rejuvenate and replenish our bodies. So keep your hair follicles healthy also, right? The outside cover of the hair is called the cuticle or the shaft part, right? The cuticle is made of keratin. And remember, keratin is actually like a waxy substance that helps protect the hair and helps protect our skin, right? Hair follicles are associated with our sebaceous glands, right? So that's why our hair gets that little natural oily flavor when you don't wash it very much, right? And how much are we supposed to wash our hair? Remember, comment below, not every single day, for the most part, depending on what you do, you don't have to wash it, but you can rinse it out, right? For the protection, the beauty of our skin and our hair, you don't need to scrub it every single day, right? So the keratination, which is actually protecting us, they're basically dead cells, but they keep in the oils and they keep our hair a little bit waterproof, right? It's called sebum. So no, you don't want to wash that stuff out every single day, right? The longer that you can go without washing your hair, the more the natural oils are going to help with your dryness and your dandruff, which is actually a type of eczema, right? It's going to help with your rashes and it's going to make your hair so shiny and healthy, you know? That's when you comb the oils around to get to the bottom of your hair. Mine never get to the bottom of my hair, so I actually have to help it out with other coconut oil and stuff like that I put at the bottom. But if your hair's short, it actually helps moisturize all of it. So good. So specific for your hair. All your oils are good for your hair, okay? I also learned you can put aloe in your hair. It's actually really good. I have some ginger flowers outside that have the, the pineapple on top, and I picked one up by the flower one day, and I got goop all over me. Did you know that you can use that to wash your hair? I did not know that. And of course, like I said earlier, coconut oil. I love to put coconut oil everywhere, switch it in my mouth, organic, switch it in my mouth, put a little some on the bottom of my hair, rub some in my little extra sub Q tissue. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So using your own oils for your hair is better. But if you can't, make sure you moisturize from the inside out. Lots of water too, and that will help, right? So our hair protects us, and we know it does. Our hair protects us from some damage, right? There's UVA and UVB. 
E rays, right? Remember, um, these rays from the sun can actually damage the cuticles in the inner structures of our hair. So be careful. The cortex is actually in the middle and on the inside of the hair, and that's where the melanin is, and that's what gives your hair the natural color. Well, the melanin actually helps you and helps protect your beautiful locks against the UV rays. I did not know that either until I started doing this podcast. So that's why there's two podcasts on hair, okay? So be careful of the sun, all right? Imagine the extra damage from the sun if your hair is already dry, if it's broken, if it's split in it, if you color your hair too much, if you put too many chemicals in it. Imagine what that sun is going to do to your hair. When your hair changes colors from being in the sun, and I'm not talking about being in the chlorine or in the water, but when it changes colors from the sun, that is actually sun damage on your hair. I thought that was so exciting. Whenever I go to the beach and stay for a little while, that my hair will actually turn white. I didn't know that was sun damage. Now I do. I always wear a hat if possible, okay? And yes, you need a little bit of sun. A little bit of sun is good because you need that vitamin D for your skin, for your body functions, and you need it for your hair, okay? Also, our hair keeps our pheromones, which is our odor. That's what brings your mate to you, right? If you're an animal. Actually, maybe not. <laughs> maybe that's actually what brings your mate to you, too, if you're a human, too, right? So the smell under your arms, right? The smell that you get in your hair. If it's a musty smell, how is your insides doing, right? Your nails and your hair are actually elimination systems. Did you think about that? I never thought about that. These are actually exits from the body. I did not know that. So how do you clean yours? How do you clean your hairs, right? How do you clean your nails? Your nails protect you. They help you grasp things. Your fingernails color and the shape also could be an indicator of your health. A flat, dusky, clubbed finger could mean infection. It could mean a fungus that's built up that's growing too fast, right? It can mean you have cardiovascular problems too. Your body, other parts of your body is going to let, let you know what's going on the inside of your body also. So pay attention, right? Some diseases of your hair and the stresses in your life that you can't handle, that you can handle now that you know us, but that you're learning how to handle, that sounds better, but all that stress can give you hair loss, right? People know that. It can decrease your shine no matter what products you're using, and it decreases your vitamin D. So stress, you got to decrease that, and there's many, many ways to decrease stress no matter how your life is, no matter how your life is. You can decrease that stress just a little bit, okay? And, of course, we have our hormones. Yes, hormones. The hormones can actually change your hair, and it can make it grow in places that are different from other people and where they weren't when you started this life, right? People with hirsutism, which actually increases testosterone levels in females, it gives you hair where there's usually minimal hair too, but there's ways you can get rid of that too. There's laser hair removal, other things, and balance out your body from the inside out and the outside in and make those hormones be balanced inside your body, Okay. And of course, there's cancers, the ones you get on your scalp that you can't see. It might just feel like a little bump in your head or a little itchy thing or some flaking that doesn't go away. Yes, that could be dandruff, it could be eczema. After you drink your fluids and make sure that you're getting your body healthy from the inside out, if you feel anything, if you have a question or a thought and you can't see it, please have somebody check it. And then if you both still aren't sure, please go see your doctor. Catch everything early, of course, right? preventative medicine, catch everything early. What I teach is pre-prevention, what you do before you have to go to the doctors, and then you might not have to. But anything that's weird or itchy or anything in your scalp, someplace that you cannot see, but you hit it with the comb or the brush all the time, please go let your doctor or somebody look at that, okay? With any kind of disease or illness, you're going to have something that's going to go on with your hair. There's going to be something that goes on with your hair, okay? So... We will help you figure that out, and please tell your doctors what's going on. Let's talk about shampoos. There's so many shampoos, so many soaps for your hair. Some of them say be careful of sulfate, okay? Be careful of sulfite. 
make sure those are not in there. Well, sulfate is actually in nature. It's found in our water, it's found on the rocks, it's found in our plants, it's found in the soil. Sulfate is actually what makes shampoo and soap have a thicker lather, right? You want some people like, oh, I didn't feel any, there's not a lot of lather and stuff like that. Well, that's the sulfate. So if you get a shampoo or soap that is sulfate free, you're not gonna have that much. You actually don't need that much lather anyway, okay? Sulfate actually attracts both water and oil, which actually helps the shampoo feel like it's a gentle clean too. And it washes away all the dead cells, all the dirt and oils that need to be rinsed away a lot easier. But most people actually start looking for sulfate free because you really don't need that many suds for cleaning. But sulfate is actually from nature, okay? They also put sulfates are in toothpaste too, which I did not know. So just be careful. Now, sulfites, on the other hand, is actually a food additive that they put in wine, that they put in molasses. I love blackstrap molasses too, and I actually made my, my garlic mixture with honey and garlic, but then I also use organic and put it in some molasses too, because you can get the benefits. So they add the sulfite in because it keeps things from growing like bacteria and funguses in the foods and stuff that it's in, okay? Sulfites actually help keep the color of some of the food that they're added to. But they also put sulfites in packaging. So is that good for your food and the things that you're putting on your body? Sulfites are made in a lab. It's chemical. Sulfate is organic. It is a salt. Your choice. You don't need that many subs. Find a good shampoo that doesn't have additives and your hair will grow faster and longer. And also make sure you use the right kind of water at the right temperature. Not too hard a water, not too soft a water, not too hot or not too cold, okay? The softness that they put in the um, salt for people's homes is actually a dehydrator, okay? Check your water, check your products, read the labels. Make sure that you know what else is in there, okay? Um, Think Dirty is a great app that you can check your for carcinogens and other crap that they put in. I'll put the link below. Um, and uh, most of the shampoos and stuff I use are on the lower scale, which means less carcinogenic. So Think Dirty is a great app for you to check anything that you put into your body or on your body, okay? Another great use for our beautiful hair is you can have DNA testing on your hair. They can do drug tests on your hair, but they can also do lab tests on your hair to find toxins and heavy minerals and see how your mineral levels and your vitamin levels are in your body. And it's actually different than a lab test of blood, which only gives you a maybe 12 hour window unless it's the hemoglobin A1C, unless it's, you know, they give you like a kind of a 12 to 24 hour window of what your sodium, your potassium, your sugars are at that point. Now, like I said, a, hemo a hemoglobin A1C is a lab test you can draw to see what the average of your blood sugars were so they can see if you're going to be a diabetic or not. But no, you're changing. You're not going to be a diabetic part two because you don't need to be as 100% curable. Watch my diabetes lecture. Absolutely. But if you do a hair analysis, which is actually kind of like a tissue analysis from a lab, it's actually several months worth of what your labs actually are. So that's what I do now. I don't do mammograms. I do thermography. I do not do blood tests anymore unless I absolutely need to for something quick. I do the hair analysis and you just send little pieces of your hair. Of course, I laid mine all the way out on the counter and then had to cut a little piece off in three different places. And then in a month, they gave a huge, uh, a huge layout of everything that was in my body. I think it was like seven or eight pages. And they explained everything about what was going on. I was very surprised that some of my stuff was low. So now I've changed all those things and I'll be doing it again at the end of this year. I do it twice a year. And if you ask your doctor about the hair analysis, they might not know about it. So don't get upset with them. That's not what they're taught. Comment below, text me, ask me, and I will show you, or I'll figure out where the lab was that I had mine done, okay? But this is what I do. It's so, it's so much awesomer. 
For my hair, I told you guys before, I use True Science Hair and Skin Care from Life Vantage. I'll put that link below also. My hair is very strong. My hair has beautiful colors of its own, not from a bottle anymore. To protect my hair and my face, I wear a hat most of the time, okay? I learned from YouTube how to actually trim my hair, and it's very long. It actually goes down to my ass, so um, I figured if I messed it up just trimming it, it wouldn't, you know, because I don't want to pay all that money just to cut the hair right across the bottom, right? But the way I've been treating my hair from the inside out, finally, I have long hair. I've always wanted really, really long hair so I can do a new style every single day, long or short, up in a bun, part in the middle, part on the side, part on the other side, don't part it at all. So awesome. This is makes my life so happy for the second half of my life. It's so awesome. So how long do you go before you wash your hair? How many days? Remember those oils and the sebum from your follicles help lubricate your scalp and help your hair with good fat. And that's basically what it is. It's good fat, right? And it gives you nutrients that it needs. It protects your hair. Comment below. Did you know anything else? Add it to the bottom so I can add it to my podcast so we can help other people. My name is Kathy. Thank you much, so much for listening again. Remember, love, like, subscribe, and share so we can tell more people that we're so awesome and love, learn, and take control. And we actually are. Thank you. I'll see you next time. Bye.